In this video, I'm going to talk about the eight things that I stopped buying to make as well as save more money. These things can easily add up to thousands spent monthly, but by cutting out these truly unnecessary expenses, the money can be better used to invest and make you more money as time goes by and save you tons of cash. What's up? My name is DJ, and on that thing bigger, I explore various aspects of personal finance, making money, and thinking bigger. Removing these eight things has granted me the ability to still live the same way, but the best part about it is while keeping that same quality of life, I have so much more money at the end of every month, and that sounds like a better situation to be in, if you ask me. The first thing I stopped buying was all brand name items. Yes, I just heard you through the screen, but dude, you have on a Nike shirt right now. That's a brand name item. Well, dude, I didn't even buy this. It was a gift, so I didn't spend my money on it at all. These brand name items don't increase in value. Once you buy something, you won't receive the same amount for it if you try to sell it again, especially if you've worn it multiple times. A lot of times people just buy these items just to show off when in reality, they can't necessarily afford it. And some people even go into debt just to impress others. I've seen it firsthand. It doesn't make sense to buy something you can't afford when you could have found a better use for the money and allowed it to make you more money by investing into these brand name companies instead of buying their products. Learn to partner with them and make money instead of always being a consumer. I saw a Payless prank where they created a fake store with a fancy name, Payless A, and they put $30 shoes inside the store but priced them extremely high, some as high as $600. They invited wealthy fashion influencers in and the wealthy people were questioned about the products in the store and they raved about how good the shoes looked, the great quality of them, and they were asked to guess who they were made by and things like that. They bought thousands worth of shoes because of a name when each item really had a value of less than $50. Number two, sales. Don't just buy something because you see a big sign that says sale or discount because in actuality, it's not really a sale or a discount. Everything is marked up. Businesses' sole objective is to provide a product or service that would generate profit. So they aren't going to do anything that will put them at a disadvantage. There are different tiers behind the scenes. The highest price they feel people will buy the product for, which is always the markup and the price that you see. Then there's a the sale price. That's the actual price they charge. This is the minimum price they're willing to accept to generate the profit that they want. And then there's the price that the company actually pays for the product itself. Around the 4th of July, we wanted to get some fireworks. So we went to one place and they had a box of fireworks for $100. My brother called me and said, hey, it's a store on the next street that has the entire store. Buy one, get one free. So I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go check it out. So once we get there, we see the same exact box of fireworks that cost $100 going for $230 for just one box. But the kick part is when you buy one, you get the other one for free. So technically each box was $115. If I hadn't gone to the other store, I thought I was getting a deal, but in actuality, I was about to pay even more for the same exact product. If you're buying something because you were going to purchase it anyway, it's good to get at the sale price instead of the marked up price. But don't just buy something because you walk in the store and say sale. You really could go without it. Three is trends. They come and then they go, just like your money. Once the trend ends, you're still stuck with whatever product you just got, but your money is gone. You can't sell a product because the trend is over. And trends aren't cheap. It's not like you're spending $5. It's usually a good amount of money involved because everyone knows it's a hot product and businesses can charge more because it's in demand. If you see a trend starting, find a way to get on the opposite side of it. Be a seller rather than a consumer. Number four is books. I love books. I love to read and consume information. I have a nice book collection, but honestly, I wish I knew earlier that there was actually a way that you could rent books for free from an app called Libby, and you can easily get them from your local library. Since books contain knowledge and it's stored in your mind, it's super easy and will save you money just to rent whatever you need, read it, take notes, and then return it. And if you ever wanted to reread the material, just rent it again. Number five is a new car. The moment you drive the car off the lot, it loses value. Taking and try to sell it the next day, you won't get the same amount back for it unless you're buying a car where there's only a few of them in the world. A car is not appreciating in value. All you truly need is something that's reliable that can get you from point A to point B. It doesn't make sense to buy something that costs just as much or more than your yearly salary just to drive to and from work. You're only in the car for an hour or two a day, if that. A lot of people use cars as a way to impress others, but unless impressing those other people is putting money in your pocket, you shouldn't be doing it. It's one thing to get something you want because you can afford it, but it's a completely different thing to get something simply as a status symbol. Number six, subscriptions, subscriptions, subscriptions. You have to keep an eye on these as they can add up quickly. $9.99 here, $7.99 there. The next thing you know, you have $200 or more in total monthly subscriptions. There are some that you know about, and then again, some that you only plan to do a trial for and completely forgot to cancel. I was guilty of this with my gym membership. Shame on me. I wasn't going, but I was steadily paying $25 a month. In my eyes, I needed the subscription, but I wasn't taking advantage of the access that I had. If you have a subscription that you actually use, great. If you aren't, then cancel and save yourself some money. You can use different apps like Rocket Money that can show you everything in one place and even cancel the subscriptions for you if you choose you don't want or need them anymore. 
Number seven is cable. In today's age, you truly don't need all the stations that you're offered. You have a select amount of things that you like to watch day in and day out, and it doesn't require 700 channels for you to find it. You can get everything you need and want individually for a cheaper price. Be intentional and specific and only pay for the things you actually want and save yourself a lot of money by doing so. Number eight is groceries while hungry. How many times have you gone to the grocery store hungry and came out with way more stuff than you planned? Got home and realized you don't even have room for everything that you just bought. Some items will go out of date and you will lose out on your money. Your stomach overrode your thoughts. Everything looked good in the moment and it seemed as if you needed it. Now what I do before I grocery shop is first of all, I make a list so I know what I actually need. But second, I make sure I'm eating and I'm full and not just thinking about food off an empty stomach. Remember, whatever you want to do, start now and expect to have some struggles, but persevere. Be determined, have some grit about you and know that in the end, you will succeed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video where I talk about 15 profitable business ideas that you can start today. Peace and love, BTB.